Welcome to the second part of the module on concurrency, motivations, and challenges. In this part, we explore key challenges that you need to understand to cut the Gordian knot of complexity related to developing concurrent software for mobile devices. Some of these challenges are called accidental complexities, which arise from limitations with the tools, techniques, and methods we commonly use to build software. For example, concurrent programs are often written using low-level application programming interfaces written in languages like C and debugged using tools that aren't well equipped to detect common hazards of concurrent programming. All too frequently, these problems are self-inflicted. Because we don't always have to use these tools, techniques, and methods, it's often just conventional wisdom or common practice. Other challenges are called inherent complexities, which arise from fundamental problems in the domain of concurrent software, such as deadlock, scheduling, and synchronization. These inherent complexities constitute the rocket science of the domain of concurrent programming and require deep thinking and analysis to get right. A common accidental complexity is the use of low-level application programming interfaces, or APIs, which are tedious, error-prone, and non-portable when used to develop concurrent software. For example, Consider the pthreads concurrency API that's available in Unix, including the versions of Linux used in Android, as shown at this path name. A number of accidental complexities are associated with using the pthread API to write concurrent software. First, it uses low-level and error-prone data types, such as pointers to functions that are passed when a pthread is created. Likewise, typecasts are needed to pass a data structure as a void pointer when a thread is created, as well as to cast the void pointer back to whatever structure is used to pass data between the caller and the callee in the pthreads environment. Casts disable compiler type checking, which allows subtle errors to creep into your software. Another problem is the use of quasi-type thread handles, which are error-prone since compilers can't provide effective type checking if the wrong type of handle is accidentally passed to a pthread function. Finally, since we're programming to the pthreads API explicitly, this code won't be portable to non-POSIX platforms, such as Windows or VXWorks. Lest you think that we're unfairly picking on pthreads, most operating systems today have these kinds of problems when low-level C APIs are used to write concurrent programs. Some other accidental complexities associated with concurrency stem from limitations with our debugging environments and our debugging tools. A well-written and properly functioning concurrent program is a thing of beauty. But what happens when something goes wrong? What tools enable you to drill down, look inside of your software to figure out what's happening, and then take the appropriate remedial action? There are a number of challenges here. One problem is that the behavior you see in the debugger doesn't necessarily reflect the actual behavior of the deployed software, which is often called a Heisen bug, since the act of observing a system inevitably alters its state, as described at this link. For example, you may use a debugger to single step through some code in one thread while other threads are running, but the execution sequence and the execution times may differ if the program was running outside of the debugger. This divergence makes certain types of scheduling hazards and timing problems hard to identify and hard to rectify. This link describes some multi-threading debugging techniques that may be helpful in addressing these problems. Another problem stems from race conditions that occur when multiple threads simultaneously crash into unprotected data structures and corrupt them, which yields defects that are often hard to detect until your program is deployed in its target environment, as described at this link. Many debuggers have poor support for detecting race conditions during the development of concurrent software. To handle these types of problems, you need advanced methods and tools, such as static or dynamic analysis. These links describe some relevant technologies and tools some of which are targeted at Android. Some common inherent complexities of concurrent software relate to synchronization and scheduling, which deal with the order and or time in which operations are performed. Synchronization ensures that multiple concurrent threads don't execute critical sections of a program at the same time and thus corrupt shared resources. Synchronization also occurs in our daily lives. For example, air traffic controllers must synchronize access to a runway, which is a shared resource, to ensure airplanes don't collide on takeoff or landing. 
Likewise, Android needs to synchronize access to the SQLite contacts database to ensure that applications running concurrently on the device don't corrupt the raw contact entries. This link contains more information on synchronization. Scheduling ensures that threads, processes, or data flows are given proper access to system resources. For example, air traffic controllers need to schedule the arrival and departures of airplanes based on limited resources, such as gates and runways. Likewise, Android scheduler must ensure that an emergency call isn't missed just because the user is playing the Angry Birds game on the phone. Getting all this right is hard, since there are many states to manage in concurrent programs, and it's hard to keep track of them all to ensure that the software does the right thing under both expected and unexpected conditions. This link contains more information on scheduling. Another inherent complexity is deadlock, which occurs when two or more competing actions are each waiting for the other to finish, and thus none ever do. The diagram on this slide shows a deadlock where thread T1 owns lock L1 and needs to acquire lock L2, while thread T2 owns lock L2 and needs to acquire lock L1. This circular wait, or deadly embrace, blocks the threads indefinitely. Identifying, detecting, and removing deadlocks is an inherent complexity of developing concurrent software. For example, you wouldn't want the Android Gmail application to deadlock on resources held by the calendar application and vice versa. This link provides more information on deadlock. In summary, several types of complexity make it hard to develop and assure concurrent software. As covered in the POSA 2 book, and more generally in the classic No Silver Bullet paper, described at this link. Accidental complexities arise from self-inflicted wounds, such as limitations with low-level application programming interfaces written in C. If you follow this link, you'll learn more about accidental complexities of developing concurrent software, as well as some tips on how patterns and frameworks help to alleviate these complexities. Inherent complexities arise from fundamental challenges in particular domains, such as the domain of concurrent software. Solving these hard problems involves deep thinking and may require applying sophisticated analysis methods and tools. The book at this link describes many algorithms and mechanisms for addressing inherent complexities of concurrent software. As concurrent software becomes more pervasive in mobile cloud computing systems, and as users increasingly rely on mobile devices for mission-critical and lifestyle-critical tasks such as security, e-commerce, geopositioning, and transportation, it's essential to understand the challenges described in this part of the module and resolve them, so you'll be better positioned to slay the dragons of complexity. A key part of the solution that we'll explore throughout the rest of this section is how Android codifies time-proven experience in the form of reusable patterns and frameworks that help overcome key inherent and accidental complexities of developing concurrent software for mobile devices.